Are you craving a trip on Space Mountain? Well, we've got the next best thing. Welcome to Disney Coast to Coast. Hey folks, and welcome to Disney Coast to Coast, the ultimate unofficial Disney fan podcast. I'm Jeff DePauly, and welcome to the House of Mouse headlines for the week of August 9th, 2020, brought to you by LaughingPlace.com, your up-to-date resource for the latest Disney news every day of the week. And this week's news, a bonus perk for Walt Disney World annual pass holders, a new show at Disney's Hollywood Studios, Mulan's unique upcoming debut, and more. So let's get to it. Hear the latest news from the Walt Disney Company in today's House of Mouse headlines. First up this week, the Disney Parks Mom Panel has a new name. As the Disney Parks blog has announced, the group will now be known as Plan Disney and continue to serve as the official question and answer platform for guests planning a Disney vacation. Despite the name change, Plan Disney panelists will continue to be selected by Disney through a comprehensive search process. However, while panelists are usually part of the team for one year, with the unprecedented changes of 2020, the current panelists will remain on for another year before the next Next group is selected. By the way, if you're looking for info for your next trip, the Plan Disney Searchable Archive has more than 200,000 pieces of advice you can explore. Walt Disney World annual pass holders who can't make it to the parks but still want to get their hands on some Disney Parks merchandise got some unexpected but exciting news this week. From now until August 14th, guests with a valid Walt Disney World annual pass can save 30% on ShopDisney.com site-wide. To access the benefit, pass holders will need to be logged into an account that matches their My Disney Experience app and use code AP30OFF at checkout. That's AP30OFF. Sadly, at this time, the discount is only valid for Walt Disney World annual pass holders, and the benefit has not been extended to Disneylanders, but hopefully this new precedent could mean that such a benefit is possible down the road. Although the Run Disney Wine and Dine Half Marathon weekend was recently forced to go virtual, another in-person Run Disney event is now open for registration. Right now, annual pass holders, Disney Vacation Club members, and Golden Oak residents can claim their spots for the 2021 Star Wars Rival Run weekend, while the general public can join starting Tuesday, August 11th at 10 a.m. Eastern. The Run Disney event is slated for April 15th through the 18th at Walt Disney World and will include a 5K, 10K, half marathon, and kids races. So grab your lightsaber and be ready this Tuesday if you want to join the resistance or first order this April. After adjusting things such as boarding pass distribution times for the incredibly popular Star Wars Rise of the Resistance ride at Disney's Hollywood Studios, yet another interesting operational change arrived this week. Now, boarding passes bear a scannable barcode at the top, similar to what's found at Disneyland. This is notable because it seems to signal another move away from requiring magic bands and instead allowing guests to simply use their smart devices. Of course, we'll have to wait and see if this is a sign of big things to come or just an added convenience the resort is testing. On August 2nd, the Theater of the Stars at Disney's Hollywood Studios debuted a new show, the Disney Society Orchestra and Friends. This 18-minute show features a sextet that specializes in big band-style versions of our favorite movie melodies. Among the favorites they've been recording are If I Didn't Have You from Monsters, Inc., the Star Wars Cantina Band Song, the Muppet Show theme, and more. Plus, with these concerts taking place in the venue that typically houses Beauty and the Beast live on stage, friends from that show also make an appearance as the band performs renditions of Be Our Guest and the film's title track. Currently, the Disney Society Orchestra is performing multiple times daily, so be sure to check out your Times Guide or the My Disney Experience app. As the coronavirus pandemic endures, Disney Cruise Line has now canceled sailings through October and early November. This announcement follows an announcement from the Cruise Lines International Association regarding a voluntary suspension of passenger operations from U.S. ports until at least October 31st. Unfortunately, the dates of this extension means Disney Cruise Line won't be able to host their popular Halloween on the High Seas events, just another Halloween event to be canceled. Guests who are booked on any of the impacted sailings should be on the lookout for an email from Disney or speak with their travel agent about rebooking and refund options. 
While Disney's third quarter earnings certainly weren't the best in the company's history, there was one bright spot, Disney+. Plus. During a call with investors, CEO Bob Chapek revealed that the streaming service had 60.5 million paid global subscribers as of this week. That means that Disney Plus has reached its five-year goal in less than one year. What's more, the platform is set to debut in a half dozen more European nations next month. Of course, with the first year anniversary of Disney Plus coming up in November, it'll be interesting to see how many annual subscribers renew. But with Season 2 of The Mandalorian kicking off in October, there is incentive for some to hold on. In even bigger Disney Plus news, Disney has confirmed that their live-action remake of Mulan will be coming to the streaming platform next month. But there's a catch. Mulan will be offered under what Disney is calling a premium access model. This means that not only will users need to be Disney Plus subscribers, but will also need to pay $29.99 to watch the film. Currently, details about this release have not been announced, but it is expected that paying this fee will allow users to essentially unlock it and continue to stream it as if they would any other film on Disney Plus during this premium window. Then, after an unspecified amount of time, the movie will become available to all subscribers. Obviously, this announcement has been met with controversy on many sides. However, while some are warning that this could spell the end of movie theaters as we know them, Chapek suggests that they are currently viewing this model as a one-off and are not expecting to utilize it for future releases. From one live-action remake to another, Deadline is reporting that Tom Hanks is in negotiations to play Geppetto in Disney's Robert Zemeckis adaptation of Pinocchio. If you're having deja vu, it's probably because this isn't the first time Hanks' name has come up in conversation for this role. Back in 2018, when Paddington director Paul King was attached to the project, reports suggested that Hanks would be taking on the role of Geppetto. So could it be for real this time, reuniting the Forrest Gump as well as castaway actor and director? We'll have to wait and see. In other movie news, Marvel Studios has found a new director for the 2022 Captain Marvel sequel. Naya DaCosta has been tapped to helm the project, which will once again center around Carol Danvers. DaCosta recently directed Jordan Peele's Candyman sequel, which is due out this fall, and also wrote and directed the acclaimed 2018 drama Little Woods, which stars Tessa Thompson and Lily James. Unlike the first film, Captain Marvel 2 won't take place in the 1990s, but will star Brie Larson as Captain Marvel. As of now, the sequel is slated to arrive in theaters July 8th, 2022. Finally this week, it seems that Disney's relationship with Netflix may not be entirely over just yet. According to reports, the rival streamer is nearing a deal to acquire the 20th Century Studios film The Woman in the Window. The film, which was originally set to be released in 2019 before being pushed to a May 2020 bow and later removed from the schedule, stars Amy Adams and was directed by Joe Wright. No announcement regarding the possible acquisition has been made, so plans can still change, but either way, it's an interesting glimpse into how Hollywood really works. That's going to do it for the news this week, so let's get to this week's Twitter poll where I asked you folks, do you plan on paying $30 to watch Mulan on Disney Plus? Your options were yes, no, or I'll split the cost. In last place was I'll split the cost with only 12% of the votes, followed by yes, you will pay the $30 with only 31% of the votes, and most of you say no, you're not going to pay it with 57% of the votes. Do you agree with these results? Cast your vote in the Twitter poll every week by following Disney CTC on Twitter. That's D-I-Z-N-E-Y-C-T-C on Twitter. And folks, don't forget to check out this past Wednesday's episode where we discussed the often overlooked live entertainment found in Disneyland's New Orleans Square. And this upcoming Wednesday, you certainly won't want to miss the return of Don Hahn as we discuss his new Disney Plus documentary, Howard, about the life and career of Disney legend Howard Ashman. The easiest way to make sure you don't miss any of the magic is by subscribing to Disney Coast to Coast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Wherever you search, don't forget, it's Disney with a Z, coast to coast. And don't forget, folks, that August is a DCTC livestream Q&A month, so if you'd like to take place in this month's livestream, head on over to patreon.com slash DisneyCTC. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash D-I-Z-N-E-Y-C-T-C. Other than that, folks, have a magical day. Bye! Thanks for listening to Disney Coast to Coast. Have a magical day. <laughs> Disney Coast to Coast is produced and hosted by Jeff DePauly. Learn more about the podcast and become a supporter at DisneyCoastToCoast.com.